How's it going everyone? Now that iOS 18 has been released to the public for a couple of months now, I found there's some features that a lot of people are missing out on that they didn't know that existed. And so in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and run down 10 of my favorite hidden features and some cool tips and tricks that you could do on iOS 18. And of course, timestamps to everything will be also in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's begin with tap to go into a dark wallpaper. You see some of these wallpapers you could customize where you could enter two different modes by a simple tap. So like right here, this is a little light switch to give you a real world example how th this will look like. See, on, off, on, off. And if you like to customize your wallpaper to do something very similar, it's very easy. First of all, go into your wallpaper customization page, tap add new, and you want to select shuffle wallpaper. Now here, by default, it will automatically select like photogenic photos, based off the categories right here. But what we want to do is select photos manually. But before you go ahead and do that, select select the shuffle frequency, and you wanna make sure you do on tap. From here, select photo manually, go to your collection, select a wallpaper based off your preference. So I have Pikachu with light and dark mode. So we are gonna select these two, select add. And now from here, you can pinch and zoom to adjust it, but they're both pretty much very close lined up. So no adjustment needed, but you could add your widgets and such. And then tap add, set as wallpaper. And now you can just simply tap the Pikachu icon. It'll automatically shuffle through with a dark and a light mode. Another thing that a lot of people always overlooked is by going into wiggle mode and tap edit, go and customize this little sun icon on the bottom here. You can select here to have a dark or a bright background of the existing wallpaper. So you are able to do things like have a dark mode icons like this as an example. I'm not sure why it bugged out, but it's bugged on my side. Could be not bugged on your side, but we selected like dark icons, right? And we select this to make our background bright. So we do have this customization ability. Just hopefully your results is better than mine because mine was kind of glitchy. Now this next one is, should be fairly familiar is the power off button right here, but that's not what I want to show you. But if we do go into our power off mode and we slide, take a listen what happens. Our iPhone actually made a turn off sound. Now this isn't new for iOS 18. This was actually available since iOS 17, but still a lot of people don't know about this. And a lot of people are always shocked to find out that my phone makes noise, makes a sound whenever it turns on and off. And to turn it on, here, you will hear it. It makes a different tone each and every time. I love using this feature due to the fact that it saves me the frustration of knowing if my phone is either dead on batteries because this is guaranteed to let me know that my phone's working properly and it is indeed turning it on instead of me just holding the power button until I, until I see the Apple logo coming up. So if you like to also enable this on your phone, it's very easy. Just go into your settings and go into the accessibility tab and from here, go into audio and visual. And then right here, you'll see power on and off sound and enable that. And now you are all set. Now the next hidden feature is located in the phone app. You see by launching the phone app, if you go to your recent tab and search, if you actually search up written text, like a name of a hospital, a business, or somebody's name. So in our case, I'm just gonna put call because that's like the default thing when people leave a voicemail, call me back at this number and search that. If you look closely on the bottom, your voicemail's transcripts are also being searched up. So I find this extremely useful when you're looking back at your voicemail logs and you're trying to figure out what business was this number. And if they left the voicemail, the transcript should automatically pop up, allowing you to search up that business number easier and get back to them. And no, you do not need to have an iPhone with Apple intelligence to benefit off of that. Now this next one is super useful, especially with your grandparents. You see, let's say for example, this is my grandma's phone and she needs tech support. Well, she could just FaceTime me. So here we are, I have these two phones FaceTiming each other. And on her phone, she could select screen share. And you could select, you could select share this phone screen or share the other phone screen and then select share. And then on the other phone, tap on top and you'll see a mirror of the other phone. So you can help guide them verbally like this or you could draw around certain, certain icons to help them navigate through things faster. But on the very bottom right here, there's a finger icon. By tapping here and allow on the other phone that you like to control, 
give it a couple seconds, and now I can control the other phone from the other phone that we're FaceTiming, allowing me to navigate and fix any issues or show them a couple of new tricks by no longer physically having to be there and as I have remote access to the other phone right here. And then when I want to end it, I could either tap on the finger icon on my side or the caller could just tap stop and it will end it all entirely. Then of course you could just end the call. Now another overlooked feature is widgets. You see before you had to obviously go into your edit and add widgets to get access to your widget page. Now you can just long hold and then these icons on their knees, if you select it, it will automatically activate the widget for that app. So it gives you quick access to your widgets right down here. That one's just taking a while to load, but if we go into an app with a better example like Chick-fil-A, I can select the long widget right here and right here it immediately loads. Now these next few features are located in the photo app. You see in your photo page, if you scroll all the way down to the utility page, right here in our utilities, you can select here and a lot of people overlook this, but you do have access to receipts and handwriting. So by selecting handwriting as an example, all my handwritten notes will automatically be popped up right here, organized. So if I'm trying to look back for like document papers that I physically handwritten. I can always go back and refer to my photo library now as all this is now organized. I can simply tap on it and yep, that's definitely handwritten. And the same works if you use the search too. If you're trying to search up a piece of paper, the photo search app can now search up handwritten notes as well. Now another overlooked goodie is centering faces. You see, we should already be familiar with the cleanup tool, right? By tapping the little edit icon down here and going to the cleanup, allowing it to load. It's going to suggest subjects to remove so I can select it and it'll automatically be erased just like that. But if you're trying to center like a face or something, you could just do a circle around somebody's face. It will automatically pixelate it with a filter and allowing it to be censored just like that. So that's a cool little tool right there that a lot of people tend to always forget. And if you're somebody who's using the podcast app from Apple, now whenever you launch a podcast and we go ahead and select resume, right? So we are like... 32 minutes in this podcast. If you'd like to share this with a friend in case it was like a funny moment, but you don't want them to watch the entire podcast, you can just share that exact moment. Tap share episode. You'll see a new from start option. You can select here and you can select the time that you like to resume from that you like to share from. And then tap done. And now whenever they receive this message from you, it will resume from the exact moment you like them to listen to. Instead of you having to write down, start at 30 minutes, you could just do it all automatically now. And then a cool little tip right here is if you're also annoyed whenever you get in your car and if you were watching like a YouTube video or a movie and it automatically resumes as soon as CarPlay connects to your phone, there's a cool little trick you could do where it won't resume the audio that you were listening to. This way you don't freak out your guests. So if you like to turn off that auto play ability, you need to first go into the shortcut app on your iPhone, launch the shortcut app, and from here, select automations. I'm gonna censor this real quick because somebody's email is right there and I don't want to show you. But you see right here I have it, so it automatically pauses the audio when it connects to CarPlay. So I'm gonna delete this so we start from fresh. Tap the plus on top. From here, look for CarPlay. Select CarPlay and you want it to run immediately. Once you do that, select next. And then in new blink automation, select new blink automation. And then in the search action, type in pause or play. So I'm just gonna select play and scroll down until you find pause slash play. Select this and then select the pause slash play and select pause because we want it to automatically pause when connected to CarPlay on the iPhone. Select done. And now you've set up the shortcut automation where as soon as you get in your car, it will automatically pause whatever audio you're listening to. But other than that, there you guys have it. Those are all the cool little tidbits that iOS 18 continues to have. If you found some useful features in this video, greatly appreciate if you could take two seconds to leave this video a like as those really help me out and help out others as well. They're likely to also see this video. But if you were impressed with that CarPlay hidden feature, then you'll definitely enjoy this next video you definitely need to check out, which is right over there, which is more hidden features, but for CarPlay. So definitely do check out that video. But if you'd like to know how I'm able to watch YouTube videos on Apple CarPlay, I also cover the hardware that's needed in this video over there. Thank you so much for watching.